Hey guys, it's going to Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to give you an overview of the XR input. I have this canvas here that I'm going to use for showing you what we're capturing from the actual controllers. So I have my Oculus Rift controller here. I have one for the left hand and also one for the right hand. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pressing different buttons. We're going to be capturing those events and basically printing that information out here in the log. So I already have this set up in a way that it's going to make it easier for you to run it and understand it. So I have this input manager, which I haven't created the input manager. We're going to be doing that in this session. I also have a logger. So all you know is that there's a logger that basically prints to the screen. And then we're going to be printing from the input manager that I'm going to be creating. So I'm going to click on new script. This one is going to be input manager. I'm going to, so it's going to create it. We're going to go into it and also making some code changes. So normally what we do in, you know, in instances like this is you have, you know, you have the regular input, the key, and you do something like, you do something like this if you're trying to capture the keyboard input. But what if you wanted to do, you know, capture the input from an XR device, whether this is going to be virtual reality or augmented reality. In our case, we're going to be dealing with VR. So I'm going to show you how to capture that. So I'm going to do private input device. And when you do this, it's not going to have the namespace added. So you're going to have to do, you know, bring in the new space, which is going to be Unity Engine.xr. I'm going to just call this one controller. I'm also going to be doing another thing that is going to allow us to query against the input manager devices, what kind of nodes, what kind of devices we want. And to do that, you can just do use an XR node. And the XR node is going to determine, okay, are we grabbing the input devices from the right hand or from the left hand, or are we grabbing a different type of device, which could be also a game controller. So in this case, I'm just going to call this one XR node. I'm going to also initialize it to be the left hand. This one is going to be serializable. So we're going to allow you to change or the, whoever is changing the or making the experience is going to be able to control that. So the other thing that I'm also going to need is I'm going to need a list because it's going to give it's going to give us the, all the different devices that the input devices is detecting. So for that, we're just going to use this list. I'm going to call it devices. And just to be consistent here, I'm going to call this one device. It's going to keep those two consistent. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm going to add a method here called get device. I'm just going to say get device. And this is going to get called if the device has not been set yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the input devices. There's a method called get devices at XR node. So we're going to call that. There's also another method. So you can do, there's multiple, but you can use get devices. It'll give you every single device. I'm going to specify. So this is kind of like a query. You're going to specify what type of nodes do you want. And if you notice, it takes an XR node. I'm going to be just grabbing the one that we set through the inspector. So it's going to be your XR node. And I'm also going to be passing in the list that we're just creating in here. So I'm going to say, you know what? I want to know all the devices that you have on that node, and it's going to populate this list. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, device. I just want to grab the first device because I know that I'm controlling this experience. So I'm going to say first or default. I'm going to use some link. And I'm going to be bringing a link in here. Awesome. So, so far, so good. We haven't really called any, any methods yet. All we are doing is just defining. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, you know what? On enable, I'm going to call the on enable meta. And let me go ahead and remove the word private. I don't like to have that when it's already known that by not having it, it's private by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if the device is not valid, so it's going to be valid as soon as we detect it. It's not going to be valid at the beginning because we haven't, you know, we haven't really detected it. But if the device is not valid, I'm going to, I'm going to basically set it. That's basically what I'm saying, what I'm saying in here. So if the device is not valid, I'm going to say, you know what, get devices. I'm going to get my device. So when this initializes, it's going to say, okay, the device has not been basically enabled. So we haven't really detected it yet. So this is going to be false, which is going to make it true. We're going to call this meta. It's going to tell, okay, input devices, give me all the different nodes that you have for that specific node. In our case, it's going to be the left hand unless you change it. And then I'm going to just get the first one out of the list of devices that we got back. So oh, this is going to give us basically the device that we're going to be tracking. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove a couple of these comments. And I'm also, I also want to do it here just to make sure that we 
we have set it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, you know what? I, I know that we, so for whatever reason, if you don't have the device detected at this point, let's say that your controller is disconnected or we don't know the state of it, it's going to get, you know, it's, this is not going to get executed. And it might get executed, but it might not get a device because it didn't detect the device. So we want to make sure that we did, we do get the device. So I'm going to do the, the exact same check. I'm going to say, okay, you know what? If the, if this device is not valid, it's still, I'm going to call, I'm just going to call get device. And then by this time, we should have, you know, we should know that the device is being populated. If we get, you know, if we get beneath this if statement. So now the next thing that I want to know is I want to know what features this device has. And you can do something like this. You can do a struct and we can use to feature usage. And this is going to give us a list of different usages that are available. And in fact, if we can do, let's do this first. We're going to do input device devices. And then we can just get the different devices here. We can just say get devices. And it's going to give us a list of devices. We can also do something like device and then get device feature usages. So we know that we have a controller. We're ready to detect a controller by this point, but we don't know what features it has. And the reason for this is because we're dealing with a framework that is cross-platform. So we don't know if this is an Oculus Quest. We don't know if this is a Vive device or a different type of device. So this is going to give us all the different usages that are available on this. But this takes in a list. So this is what we need to do next. I'm going to do a list, input feature usage. And I'm going to say this is going to be all my different features, right? Right now, it's just an empty list of features. And just to give you some overview of what this is, if I go into it and look at the definition, this is going to be basically a generic class that comes from the Unity engine, the XR. And what I wanted to show you, instead of showing you this, let me go back and remove this, is we can go here actually and try to get a feature usage. This is what I wanted to get to. So you can you can tell that this is going to give us different type of data. So in some cases, a button that you want to, you know, you want to read from, for example, the primary button on the on the Oculus Quest, it will be a button, so it's a Boolean. So sometimes you want to get an actual hint. Another time you you may want to get a value of the trigger. Maybe you're not pressing it all the way down. So they have Unity has all these different methods available for you to be able to get information out of the input devices. So what I'm going to do with this method is I'm going to say, you know what? So I don't know what you have, but I'm going to get all the different features. So I'm just going to do features. And then that should give you all the different features that that input device has. The other thing that we can also do is I can also do a for each. And let's say that I wanted to loop through all those different features. So I can just say var feature in features. And then this is going to give us all the different features that are available for that device. So what I can do is I can say, okay, you know what? I can check and make sure that the that this device or this feature is of a specific type, or I can just basically loop through every single one of them and display the information. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to do both and show you how we can differentiate between those features. So instead of using debug.log, remember that I added I have a logger. So what I'm going to do here, so that we don't have conflicts between my logger and the Unity logger, it's I'm going to be creating an alias. I'm just going to call this one Dilma Games logger. And then I'm just going to do here logger. So it's going to allow me to do to have the word logger, but with an alias so we don't have any conflict conflicts. And then what I can do here is I can just say instance, and then we can just log info. And what's going to allow us to do is it's going to basically put it in the canvas and then clear it out after we reach 15 lines. So if we go back into Unity, I'm gonna, I can show you that fairly quick. We can see that we have a max lines, and that's what my implementation allows you to do. And then you can also enable it or disable it. I use that component quite a bit for different experiences. And then what I can do here is I'm going to do my interpolation here. And I can just say feature. I can also say, you know, I want to print out the name of this feature, which in our case, it might be, you know, the primary button, the trigger button. And I can also say, you know what, this is the type. And then I can just say feature that type. Excellent. And I can just finish my quotes there and then see what this is going to give us. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I have my two controllers. I have one that is for the, the left hand and another one for the right hand. So I'm going to be just pressing different buttons. And right now, there's no coding here, but it's going to tell us 
what features are available. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into Unity. Let it recompile, hit play, and let's see if this is going to detect the controller. And I'm going to hit pause because it's going to run really fast. So you can see that it's already finding all the different features from my Oculus Rift controller. You can see that this has a feature of type grip button. It has a feature of type, you know, the type is single, booleans. I also have the primary to the axis, which is also a boolean. And then device rotation, device acceleration, and vector three if you want to know device velocity. So there's a lot of different functionality in there that we have available. So if I leave this playing, it's just going to keep playing and playing because we're looping through those features. So what I want to do though is we can do something like this. Let's say that you wanted to only check for a specific feature. So you can say of a, a specific type. We can just say a feature and I can just say type equal equal and we can also do type of. If I only wanted to know any of the features that are of type boolean, we can also do this, do it like this. And if you look at this type, this is just basically a system, system type. And then we're just saying, okay, give me the type of the boolean and then we should only be seeing any types that are of type boolean. So let's go back into our XR input. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And if I pause, you're going to see that everything that is coming through, it's of type boolean. So I know that the primary to the axis touch is, is of type boolean. The grip button is if, if of type boolean. So it just gives you, you know, more information about the specific features that you're looking for. If I want to know how to, you know, how to actually handle a trigger button, I know that the type is boolean, so I know what I need to code against to be able to get that information. So one of the things that I could do is, and I'm going to do, just going to go ahead and comment this out. So let me just do a multiple, multiple comment here. So other things that we can do, just like I was saying, let's say that we want to, so this is going to give us all the features, right? And I'm going to, going to actually comment this out so we don't, and I'll leave it in there so you guys can, can test it. Let me just remove this this and maybe remove that duplicated line. There you go. So it's going to be the first scenario. First scenario is going to get us all features, right? We're just going to find out all different features and then we have this boolean which we can also comment out and it's going to give us every feature that we have on that controller. So another way that we could do this is to say that you want to capture the maybe the trigger button, right? And we know that that's a boolean because we just looked at it. So we can say trigger button action or something like that. And I can just set it to a false. And then what I can do is I can say, you know what, device, can you give me that feature? So in this case, I want to get the feature value, not the usage, because we want to know the state of that feature. So I'm going to say, you know what, there's also something called common usages that we can use to get a specific state of different buttons. So I'm going to get the, I want to know the trigger button. So I'm going to do comma. And then this is going to use a now variable, which is going to be trigger button action. And this is going to give us a state, right? But I want to check, I'm going to do an if statement because it's going to be a true or false. So this is going to say, okay, you know what? I want to know the value of the trigger button, but we want to make sure that we're checking to make sure that this is, you know, either true or false. So I'm just going to say, I only want to do, I only want to do this whenever that value of the trigger button action is going to be equal to true. That way we know that we're pressing that button. So I'm going to go ahead and do this here and I'm going to say, you know what, the trigger button feature was activated. So I'm just going to print it out. I'm going to say the, we can just say trigger button activated. And then we can also print the state if we wanted to. So I'm just going to, even though we, we know that it's going to be true. And make sure that you pull the action, not the actual name. There we go. And I think that's everything, that's everything we need to do there. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity and I'm going to just press the trigger button on my controller. And let's hit play. So it's now playing. You can see the XR input control. I'm also going to be picking up my controller. I'm going to be pressing the trigger button, as you can see. And when I press it, we can see that the log is printing. As soon as I let go, it stops printing. I can also try on the other controller. You can see that, that it's not working. So let me show you this. If I change it from left hand to right hand, let's try and see if this works. I'm going to just press it on my right controller now. You can see that now that works. If I go to the left controller, that doesn't work because I'm only targeting the right hand controller by specifying the XR node to be right hand. So let's go to the code and do something different. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do, let's go ahead and do the primary, primary button. If I can type that correctly, I'm going to be changing, just copying this code 
And I'm also going to write this a little bit different. So in this case, we did the common usage like that, right? So what if we wanted to do something like this? So let's do input usage. I'm going to say that it's going to be a Boolean value. And in this case, I'm going to say, you know what? I don't want the, the trigger button. I'm going to want the primary button. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code here, which is in fact doing exactly the same thing. But this is the usage that I want. I'm going to grab the primary button usage. I'm going to be basically replacing this with the usage. And that way we can tell the system that I want, you know, I want a different button. It's just different syntax. It's just using a generic, which in fact, this is actually returning a static of input feature usage. So it's basically the same thing under the hood. I'm going to also be changing the value here because we're using this different Boolean doing this. And this is going to be, instead of doing that, the trigger is going to be the primary. And we also need to just replace that value. So now we have one that is capturing the trigger, another area that is that is capturing the primary button. Let me undo that. Now let's go back into let's go back into Unity. And I'm going to change this back to my left hand. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So now we're capturing the primary button and also the trigger. So trigger works. And I can also do the primary button. So trigger, primary button, and I can toggle between the two and everything. It's it's working just fine. So now what I can do is that covers, you know, capturing the, the trigger button. So I'm just going to say capturing trigger button. And then this one is going to be capturing the primary button, which there we go. I like adding comments because it, it just helps exactly remembering what we're doing just in case. And that should cover that part. So what if you wanted to get the value of the, you know, maybe you want to get the value of the joystick. So in that case, you would need to do something like this. You want to do input feature usage. In our case, it's going to be a float. And this is going to be the primary 2D access. And I'm going to also access the common usages. And you can see that we have, you know, we have multiple of them. The one that I want to capture is the 2D access. It's going to get that back. And if you notice, this is returning, oh, it's actually returning a vector too, not a flow, which is actually great because I want to know I want to know the value of the 2D axis because it can be, you know, going to, a, to a, an X axis. So it can be negative or positive, And also it could be a Y value going up or down. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing that we did above it. I'm just going to say if device that try to get feature. So in this case, we're going to do value as well. I'm going to be passing in the, the type of usage that I'm looking for, the one that I want to query. And then this is going to give us, it's, well, it's saying that it's going to give us that value. It's actually going to give us a vector. It's not going to give us that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a vector two. It's going to be the value of our, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And this one is going to be the value. And we're going to initialize it to a vector two zero. And it's going to be our out variable here. And the only reason that I want to get to here is as long as this is, that's not equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the value and if the value that's not equal to zero, a vector to zero, then I know that, you know, I'm changing, I'm basically changing the value of the axis in the joystick. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm just going to copy this exact same thing. Perfect. And paste it here. This one is going to be the, it's going to be a different one. So it's going to, just going to copy and paste that. I'm going to capitalize that because we're just, typing into a log. And then I'm also going to get the value here so we can actually see it. And let's go back into Unity and then hit play and see what happens. So, so far we have three different inputs that we're capturing. So now I can do also my little joystick here. So the primary to the axis, so I'm going to a negative number, positive number, up and down, and everything is working. I can also do my trigger. I can also use my button here. And I can't do my grip, but we could do the same thing with the grip. So if I wanted to go back here and I wanted to know the value in this case of the grip, let's go ahead and I'm just going to be lazy this time. And then we can just say here, capturing primary to the axis. I can just separate it here so we can read it better. And then in the case of the grip, I want to know, let me see if I, we have a, we have one where we can capture the flow value of the grip. And we do, we have the grip bound, which is going to be an action, true or false, or the actual value of the grip. So that's the one that I want to get. And I'm going to say grip value. I also want to get a flow value. So that's perfect. 
And also this one is going to be a flow, so I'm going to say grip value. This is actually, this one right here should be called usage. I think that's a better name. And then this one should be the value. It's going to set it to nothing. There's really no, we can just set it to zero if we want to, which the compiler is going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to put the usage here. And this, in this case, I'm going to be getting, you know, a different type of value, which is going to be the, the grip value. And then in this case, we don't really need to do anything there. We can just, we can just leave it like that. Cause that could be zero. It could be a negative number. It could be a positive number. I'm going to put that there. And this is going to be my grip. Let's go ahead and grab the grip. And just to be consistent here, I'm going to be, let's go ahead and rename this. This is going to be usage. This one is going to be primary button usage. I'm just going to go ahead and rename it. And because I'm going to be checking this anyways to source control. So I want to make sure that everything is clean and that should be the value, but that's okay. That's the button. And yeah, let's go ahead and rename it as well. So this could be the value and now everything should be consistent. So in this case, we're capturing, I'm going to copy my comments here and this one is going to be capturing the grip value. Perfect. And we have everything. So this is really not activated. This means this is going to be the value. So let's go ahead and do value. We can do value there. This one, it is activated because it's true or false. And this one is also activated. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into unity. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and we can check the results. So right now the grip is negative numbers. As soon as I'm pressing it, I'm going to a positive number. And there we go. If we go, if we let it go. Numbers are really long because we're dealing with the flow. I can also do the same thing with the trigger. I can activate both of them at the same time. I can also move around and you can see that everything is working. You can also look at the graph right there in VR and everything seems to be working. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any additional questions on what I did today, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.